What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 59 of Autodesk Fusion. Alrighty, we are going to continue on with our automatons. Today we're going to make some holes for our cams and follower rods uh, to go through. And then we're going to attach our cams to uh, the crankshaft. And then hopefully, if we get under that 10 minute time limit, uh, we'll go ahead and add in some of those joints as well. Let's see how far we get. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top right here. Now based upon what your dimensions look like, uh, you will have to change where your holes go. Uh, for me, I am just going to make a nice, easy uh, four holes because we're going to do four different cams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take a line and draw it right through the middle here. Now this little symbol right here, um, this little triangle here, this means um, it's midpoint or it's um, like equidistant. So I know that this line is equidistant between these two lines. So basically I just drew a line that cut it in half. So I'm going to right click, actually hit escape. I'm going to find that line I just drew, right click and make it a construction line. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is find uh, intervals on here to um, put my holes in. So let's do an inspect key. Let's just see how wide this is. Uh, and this is 4.5 inches across. So let's do um, every, let's do the first hole here, kind of an inch and a half. So let's just do four holes real quick. And that way you can see what I'm talking about. We're just going to do four holes for our follower rods. We are going to have to throw in dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and make that bottom piece disappear just because it keeps blinking and I just don't want to interact with it at all. So what I'm going to do is uh, change the dimensions. I'm going to have this be one inch and then this dimension here be, let's do three quarters of an inch, 0.75. Let's just have each spacing between them also be 0.75 and then 0 0.75 and then uh, let's see what is this distance here then let's see so that's 1.25 let's actually let's just change this to 1.125 that way we are symmetrical and everything looks good um, all right let's go ahead and finish that so let's make our bottom piece active again Let's go ahead and hit finish sketch. And well, well, actually one thing here is we have to constrain how big our circles are. Silly. So uh, each of these are also, we're gonna stick with the realm of uh, making each of these circles uh, quarter inch because we're using quarter inch style rods for this automata. So each circle I'm gonna do here is going to be a quarter inch. So 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. Okay, now let's hit finish sketch. Let's extrude and let's extrude all of these holes here. Go downwards and make it a cut. Click okay and we're looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit control S. We're gonna create a user safe version. That way in my automata we can update this and now my four holes are right there. Just to make sure everything lines up quite nice. Yep, we wanna make sure that the crankshaft is perfectly on top of um, our holes there. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a follower rod. So I'm actually gonna close on that top. We're gonna to create a new one and I'm gonna create a sketch. For this follower rod, of course, we're gonna go with that quarter inch thickness. Hit finish sketch extrude. Um, now your follow rod's uh, length is going to change based upon what you're using. I'm going to use the same follow rod for all four holes. So I'm just going to make this um, probably three inches in length and uh, create this as a new component. We'll call this component follow rod. Alrighty. One other thing that I'm going to do and I've seen is kind of a good practice is 
to go ahead and round off the end of this follower rod because when you are looking at how the joints work, if it has a rounded edge, it, it just tends to work a little more smoothly, at least from what I've seen. And so I'm going to round this off to be a 0 0.25 is the diameter divided by 2. And when you do that, it makes a perfectly rounded point. And so it fillets it to a uh, nice, even, smooth ball end. And that looks okay. So all I'm going to do now is click A on my keyboard. Let's change the appearance and let's pick on wood. Bamboo light and then call it done. All right, so we're going to save this. A Williams follower rod. See my follower rod pops up over here. All righty, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this in. Follower rod's going to be pulled in. Looks good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just pull this out on back. Click OK, and then we're done. Now you could pull in three more. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a copy. So we're going to make copies of this component right here. If it'll let me. Let's try that again. There we go. Create a copy, one selected. And we're just going to move this on up. Click OK. So now we got follower rod one, follower rod two. And then I'm going to click on move copy again. And I'm going to click on those two follow rods because we need four in total, right? And components. Let's try that again. Something was selected odd. One, two. Create a copy. Huh, not letting me create a copy there. I was trying to be smart there. Let's just go ahead and drag two more in then. One and two. If we notice uh, the scope and sequence, even though they're different, um, that we still have four copies of that follower rod there. And so everything still look uh, in the end, both of those situations get in the same spot. Alrighty, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just let's go ahead and join each of these follower rods approximately where they're gonna go for now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to join one end of my follower rod with that piece right there. I don't know how far in this is going to go for now. So I'm just going to have it barely in there and then call that done. I might have to edit those joints later, but uh, we'll figure that out when uh, we get there. I did need to go back and edit one thing though. By default, the type of constraint is going to be a, a rigid constraint, and we need to make that a slider constraint. That way, my uh, overall my follower rod will slide up and down appropriately. Let's go ahead and just make that position looking okay. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is let's get J on my keyboard, and I'm just gonna go ahead and join those other three joints right there. If you notice, I'm looking very specifically for that face. That way I'm having uh, an easier time making those constraints. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but this just seems to be the one way that I find to be kind of the most successful. Alrighty gonna go and find this end right here and I think for the last one let's try to get sloppy with it and see if I can make a mistake where um, that joint constraint is not doing something where I wanted because it accidentally did not pay attention to what I was clicking on alrighty alrighty so I'm gonna click on joint and I'm just gonna click on the end of this right here let's see if I run into any problems yeah, there we go. And so what I did here is I told Fusion I want the end of that to go through the slider hole. I, it's it's the way in that you select things. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to deselect the first thing. And I'm looking very specifically for the circumference of that. 
Now, uh, this is going now the wrong direction, so I'm going to click on flip. And there we go. Looking okay. And we'll call that done. So, ladies and gentlemen, there what we got so far is we have our four follower rods, and then we'll follow up with the next video on getting our cams installed. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video, and I will see you on the next one.